So we're going to see what does the future hold for uh, Boris Johnson. That's what the video will be about. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It just makes an awful difference. Just your one little subscription, believe me. And thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, he's been prime minister of, of uh, so what else could he be? What can he do that would top that? Or is there anything he can do to even stay uh, relevant? Um, we'll just let the cards tell the story. So in 1964, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson was born on June 19th, so he's a Gemini. And he was born in Manhattan, New York, USA. Uh, his 23-year-old father studied economics, and his 22-year-old mother uh, was an artist whose family were actually intellectuals. And then in 1965, mom returned to England with Alexander Boris uh, to study at Oxford, and she gave birth to a daughter. They all moved to London. Then in 1966, they re relocated back to the United States to Washington, D.C. Uh, his dad worked at World Bank, and then in 1967, another boy was born, the third child, and he was born in the USA also, just like his uh, big brother, uh, Alexander. Uh, 1969, they returned to England near Somerset, his uh, father's uh, remote uh, family home. And then uh, as a child, he suffered from deafness and had several operations to insert grommets into his ears. His earliest ambition was to be world king. Now, in 1970, mom and the kids returned to Nethercote, and then in 1971, uh, yeah, a fourth child and a third son was born, and then in 1973, they moved to Brussels, and that's where Boris uh, learned French. Now, in 1975, mom had a nervous breakdown, and the kids attended a preparatory boarding school in East Sussex. In 1977, Alexander Boris got a King's Scholarship to Eton College Boarding School and began using his middle name, Boris, plus developed an eccentric... Uh, English uh, persona that he's known for now and then school uh, reports said he was idle complacent late and popular with the wealthy classes and Boris took a gap year in Australia taught English and Latin at an Oxford uh, outward bound not an Oxford but at an outward bound inspired campus of a boarding school uh, he won a scholarship to Balliol College, Oxford, and studied ancient uh, literature and classical philosophy and then 1978 his parents relationship uh, broke down now, by 1980, the parents divorced, and Mom moved into a West London flat with the three youngest kids. In 1983, Boris dated a cover girl for Tattler, Tattler, Tattler magazine, and they became engaged. And in 1987, they were married, and at the wedding, the ceremony was accompanied by a violin and viola duet that was named Allegra e Boris, and it was written for the wedding. They settled in West Kensington. He worked for a management consultancy company, but resigned after one week. And his family connections got him work at the Times, where he made up a quote for an article on the archaeological discovery, archaeological discovery of King Edward II's palace. Made this up. I don't know what the quote was, but whatever it is, he made it up. Uh, they fired him. In 1989, he got a job at the Daily Telegraph's Brussels Bureau until 1994 when, as a Euro-skeptic journalist, he wrote Euro myths like the, Euro, the EU wanted to standardize condom sizes because Italians had smaller penises, Brussels had people who sniffed Euro manure to be sure it smelled the same, Eurocrats wanted to dictate the acceptable curve of bananas, and established limits on the power of vacuum cleaners, plus order women to return their old sex toys. He also wrote that Euro money actually made people impotent and sick. Now, 1990, his wife left him. Hmm. And then 1993, he divorced and married a childhood uh, friend, and they, and they had a daughter. And uh, they had three more kids, all surnamed uh, Johnson Wheeler. That was their last name, hyphenated. Now, in 1995, a recorded phone conversation went public where the caller, some other journalist, had called, um, had called to say that his own criminal insurance fraud was being investigated, okay, this other journalist. And he asked Boris to give him, the other journalist, the offending journalist who turned him in private address so that he could have him beaten. A couple of uh, black eyes and a cracked rib is what he wanted to do to him, and Boris agreed. So now in 2001, Boris Johnson was elected to parliament. 
Now, 2004, Boris published a novel, uh, and it was called 72 Versions slash A Comedy of Errors Around the Life of a Conservative MP Containing Autobiographical Elements. Now, 2000, Boris's affair with a columnist resulted in two uh, terminated pregnancies. And then 2008, he was elected mayor of London. 2012, he was reelected. And in 2019, he was elected as conservative leader and appointed prime minister. So let's see what the cards can tell us about this fellow. Okay, so today this is going to be a uh, viewer uh, Booper Pot Pie. That's a really cute uh, name. I believe this is a grandmother. Booper Pot Pie asks uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's political career, what does the future hold? So let's see what I can come up for with that question. Uh, Booper Pot. So I have all the cards I do. There's a couple cards in there that said squirrel, heavy squirrel, which I don't typically use. So Booper Pot Pie, Booper Pot Pie. What a cute name to have your grandkids uh, calling you. So, Booper Pot, Booper Pot Pie. What does Boris Johnson's political future hold? Boris Johnson, what does his political uh, career, uh, what, uh, what's in the future for him? Let's see, and I'll just ask that general question. We'll lay out uh, the cards and see if we come to some sort of a, uh, something that makes sense. Booper Pot Pie. Cards don't want to quite cooperate today. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and have a meditation. Okay. I love it when you guys send me questions. That gives me, um, you know, a direction. I know what it is that you want to see, and uh, then I can, uh, hopefully, what you're thinking, lots of folks are thinking. So, what does Boris Johnson's political future have in store for him? What's in store for Boris Johnson's career, his political career, his political future? Boris Johnson, what's in the cards for him? Boris Johnson. Okay. I'll take six cards to start. This will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. And I'll find the signifier card and get on the road to this divination. Boris Johnson, what's in your political future? Signifier card is the fool. Interesting. So, uh, what is the fool? The fool is the beginning of the journey. Uh, he's uh, taking with him what he uh, needs. He's trusting uh, that uh, uh, intuition or you know, destiny is looking out for him, but he's headed off, just about to fall off a cliff. Will he or will or will he be turned around? So, political future, Boris Johnson, signified by the fool card. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Now, the um, challenge to that, then, is this queen of cups. You know, the cups are emotion, compassion, and uh, so there is a, some, uh, a good deal of emotional kind of uh, looking out for or... Um, balance to this fool's uh, journey. The base of this reading then, with the Six of Wands, this is a victory. Uh, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and uh, this kind of snobbish uh, person here is holding up their victory, very proud that they have that, and uh, try, you know, uh, cantering off into the future. So, a lot looking bad. In the past of this reading, with this King of Wands, actions, plans, forward movement. Uh, Boris has been the king of his plans. In the sky of this reading, the strength. He does have an abundance of that in some form or another. This man has the wherewithal to get up, dust himself off, and keep going, even no matter how embarrassed or how foolish uh, he's made himself appear. The uh, likely outcome of this whole thing, with this three of cups, emotional, uh, emotion, compassion, that's what cups are, uh, celebrations. It's interesting, this is depicted kind of like a Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead for the Mexicans. So it's a... Uh, um, Kind of, and what would happen in that kind of a celebration is you kind of celebrate uh, those uh, deaths that have happened and uh, and uh, and move forward. Yeah, uh, the future of Boris Johnson's political career. What is going to be there? The self of that very question 
is this Eight of Swords. Okay, feeling a bit trapped, and you would. You've gone to the pinnacle. You've been Prime Minister. So uh, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law has you circled here. But this is a chrysalis. This is a cocoon. This uh, this animal will uh, emerge as a butterfly. So looks like uh, the very self of that question is uh, feeling uh, restricted, but inevitably this uh, chrysalis is going to blossom. The environment that that's in, with this Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold, I can see that your worth and uh, feeling as if there's no place for you to get in for refuge. The um, hopes and the fears, ah, the devil, that baffling. So yeah, being chained to ill intention, the hopes and the fears. I'm afraid that you know this is a, a north star. I think for for um, Johnson, being chained to some sort of lesser intention. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing for Johnson's political future is this Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. The Four of Swords is that uh, warrior knowing when to lay down on his coffin and take a rest before he starts to do something else. Okay, so I think he's going to be fine. He always lands on his feet. Just to read it one more time, Boris Johnson's political career, what's in the cards for him? Well, he's a fool. <laughs> but he's off on his journey, and something always seems to warn him when he's about to go off the ledge. Too too bad. In to uh, um, destructive a fashion. And it's challenged by that very thing, this queen of cups, this queen of emotion, compassion. There is some sort of a, uh, a watching over of him. The base of this reading with the six of wands is victory. He is uh, a victorious soul. The past of this reading is the king of wands, and that is Boris himself always being the one calling the shots, directing his future. In the sky, this is strength, which Boris has in spades, I would uh, say. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what keeps him uh, going. And then the uh, likely outcome of the first part of that, with this uh, Dia de los Mortis kind of celebration of the Three of Cups, is, uh, yeah, celebrating the death of the past, understanding the value that it had, really raising your cup to it, and then keep it on, keep on going with the party. And then the uh, self signifier card for that very question, the very self of that question, his, his political future, is this Eight of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law surrounding him, but he's going to burst out of that uh, and uh, and get reborn. And then the uh, likely um, environment that that's in, with this Five of Pentacles, is being left out in the cold, obviously, I think. The um, uh, hopes and the fears for that is being chained to that devil, lesser intentions, which he is. That's just his personality. And his path apparently, and then, but the final outcome is knowing when to take a break. That truth, justice, rules, and law. Knowing when to stop and wait until you get gained your strength back up and get going again. So it looks to me like uh, he'll be fine politically. He'll know uh, when to uh, wait and let this rest before he starts on something new. And what in the world would that be? The cards say what the cards say, and I just try to read them. So let me know if you agreed with what I came up with, and maybe you have a whole of, a different take. Uh, put it in the comments and uh, ask me a question. I'll try to get to it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, deck that I have now called Mystical Medleys, a vintage cartoon tarot. This is such a cool deck, and I've had it for a little while. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's absolutely new, but I've had it for maybe a couple, three weeks practicing with it. And uh, the box is amazing. It's a good, sturdy box. You'd expect uh, you got a nice uh, perfume, uh, perhaps, in a box like this. And this uh, is artwork by Gary Hall. And uh, this is uh, published, I presume, or distributed at least, by Sterling Ethos out of New York. Okay, very interesting minute. What happens is this box opens from the bottom. Okay, so you flip this open and then you have this uh, creature right here, which I've forgotten the name, but I'll see it in a minute because I'm going to look at the guidebook and tell you about it and then bring up the example of it on my phone. But uh, so this is how you open the box from the bottom. That opens down. This slides out. And then now what you have is this inner uh, case with a very faint kind of watermark of this uh, animal on the front. If you look inside the case, and I hope you can see it, uh, inside there is a little uh, star, which for me is temperance. Okay, or it could be the star card itself. It's got two cups, a cup in each hand, which is typical of the star card, finding that balance. And uh, so that's I love it when they've gone to the trouble to include some little secret uh, treasure for you inside the box. Now, inside here, if you take these cards out, inside this box, we have the sun. Okay, so the sun card. I hope you can see that too. Okay, and there's a little watermark on this side. There's none on the other side, and I'll show you why that's important. The other thing that comes with this card, or this deck, are two extra cards, Sad Squirrel and Happy Squirrel, for divination. And the guidebook tells you how you would divine those, and uh, that brings us to 
uh, the guidebook. So again, this little creature is a very beautifully done kind of book. And um, so if you gave this as a gift or if you were getting it as a gift, you'd feel very uh, glad uh, that you got it. And it has a nice introduction here, which is speaking to um, Gary's um, um, inspirations uh, to coming uh, into this uh uh, and it starts out like so many good stories. It all started with the devil. And that's what that uh, uh, animal uh, signifies here. Um, I've always been fascinated by magic, the cult, and the imagery of the tarot. I own several decks from the fully usable traditional ones to more modernistic, uh, modern artistic ones. And have always dreamed of creating my own in some way. Now, I want to find the name of this little devil here. And uh, so it's going to take me just a minute to read through this. Uh, because, gosh, I can't remember. Baphomet. Okay, so the creature that we're looking at then is uh, the Baphomet. That's what this guy is. So if you put these together right here, you see that is the cartoonish uh, depiction of a Baphomet. And let me show you what a Baphomet is. Let's say define uh, Baphomet. And we'll get a picture here. So this is the Baphomet. And this is a, a deity that supposedly the um, the Knights of the Templar would have, um, I don't want to say worshipped, but as it had an occultic interest in. And so the first card that Gary Hall created was that uh, Baphomet. And then from that, the rest sprung. So let's see, how am I going to do the rest of this? Yeah. Um, now, the cards themselves are a good way. They're uh, easy to use. They fit well in your hand. But the fantastic thing is how beautiful these cards are. This artist, Gary Hall, has a kind of ropey uh, quality to his art, kind of a, uh, a rubber hose kind of a, an effect. If you look at like the arms and uh and so that's his uh, style. And, um, and so the cards are very interesting. It took a little bit of uh, studying them before I felt comfortable using them for divination. Okay. And there's no reason because they do pretty easily, uh, they're pretty recognizable as the Rider Waite system. But still, for whatever reason, maybe I was just so distracted by the artwork. Um, I spread the cards out like this so that uh, if you don't get to see a lot of cards, then at least you've seen them here. And uh, you can decide... Uh, if these are uh, cards that you like and would like to use. I was always curious to see more than just a few cards that a reader would uh, pull out during the presentation. So there we go. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.